What is going on boys welcome back to another video and today we are going over a guide to the rift This is the first area. It's called willed woods And this is exactly what you should do when on the main server you get into the rift It's all new to you. You're gonna have no idea what's going on you Follow this guide you'll complete it fast get everything get the new amazing necklace So let's get into it So the first thing you do when you spawn in is you're gonna have eight minutes You're not gonna have 48 minutes. You're gonna have eight minutes um, I personally wouldn't talk to the wizard. Don't talk to Elise yet. The first thing you need to do is get more time. Time is the most important thing in the rift. And the best way to do that is to find the rift style fairy souls, which are called enigma souls. You're going to come down here. You're going to talk to enigma. He could be anywhere like in this little back area. He kind of teleports around. You talk to him. Um, for me, he's going to offer me an upgrade because I have collected a bunch of souls. But for you, he will give you the cloak. And then you should just go right into finding Enigma Souls. Ignore everything else because you need more time. This first one is right here. It's pretty free. And then you can also run over here. Going straight into this flower pot. And you're going to keep punching this flower pot and following it all the way out. These flower pots have a common theme. There are flower pots in other areas that will also lead you to Enigma Souls. This area you kind of just have to swim through. After swimming back and coming back, you can then make your way up this side of the mountain. Go up and through the wizard tower. Cross this bridge over here to where these barking wolves are. You're going to kill 20 of these barking wolves. They do steal time from you when you get hit by mobs. You do lose time. That is one thing to keep in mind. But if you get 20 of these muted barks and you punch this block right here, it will reveal for you the third enigma soul. After that, you can jump straight off. Run all the way over here to around this pond where you'll see these two ribbits. Walk on top of this, jump all the way up, and you'll be able to grab that Enigma Soul. You'll run over here. You'll jump up. And you will fall straight down into here, where you will find another Enigma Soul. So that should be five Enigma Souls. By now you should be have about half your time left, four minutes, maybe less, depending on how much exploring you did. If you do lose your time, you can just leave, pay the bits, come back, and you will have that bonus time from your Enigma Cloak. The next one is going to be over here, where you can talk to Portal, and then you are going to come over and right-click on all of these Wither Skulls. This is where the Wither King once stood, for those of you that know anything about Hypixel lore. And you're going to keep right-clicking on them, and you're eventually going to find this one. And this one is going to have these particles that eventually trail over here and reveal another Enigma soul. So now you should be six out of nine souls. One right here that requires a partner. You both just need to stand on this pressure plate and you can right click and get that soul. The eighth one. There's going to be a flea spook. I can't show you the actual spot because I already did it. There's going to be a flea spook. It's going to look, it's going to be a white head with two black dots on it that look like eyes. And it's going to have you parkour up along the trees. And it's going to eventually lead you to that spot right there. See that flea spook right there? It's going to lead you to that spot on the wall. And you will be able to get that Enigma Soul. And then you'll have eight. Every four Enigma souls you get, you can come bring back to Enigma and he will upgrade your cloak for you, which gives you more uh, mana regen speed. And the rift time is already a bonus from just claiming the souls. The first upgrade costs 2k motes and 5k motes are the second upgrade. Motes are basically the currency in the rift. So now you're probably thinking, well, how do I get motes? And you're also probably thinking, well, Yadi, you missed an Enigma soul, but I will go over that in a second. So now that you have more time to work with, you can come back up to here, talk to the wizard. He will basically show you, he'll teleport you down there. Uh, you'll have breadcrumbs. You want to make sure you have particles on. Particles are a big thing for the rift. You will follow it all the way back to the tower and end up coming all the way 
up here and you'll warp back up to the top and he'll be like, oh, this is so cool. He'll show you your guidebook, which is right here, which if you get lost, you can always look at this. Otherwise, keep watching the guide. And at this point, you can then come down here. After completing the little guide, you have your Enigma Souls. The next person you're probably going to want to visit is Sirius, or should I say Inverted Sirius. If you talk to him, he'll say he needs help getting it up. He will need a type of potion. Uh, that potion is found over in the tavern, but you are going to need some motes for this. The way to get easy motes are to kill Shies. You kill Shies by hitting them three times. They get scared, you have to look away, otherwise they steal time from you. And three more times and you get the kill. They grant you a hundred motes, as well as a Shy Crooks. You can sell the Shy Crooks to this Motes Grubber for another hundred. However, I wouldn't recommend selling the Shy Crooks because you're going to need a lot of them. So do that until you have around 500 to 1,000 motes. Come over here. And you are going to talk to Shift It. You're going to try to buy, there's going to be like a stability elixir for 500 motes. He's going to say he's out of it, but he knows somebody that can tell you who the supplier is. But you have to give him a tip. The tip is 20 motes. And basically you go on this big goose chase talking to every single person in here, even upstairs, up until they point you to, I believe, Fafner or wh whoever the last person is. And he will tell you who the supplier is. Now you have not met the supplier yet if you are following along with this guide. However, you come all the way over here to this tree, come all the way up to the top, and Serial Bather Arrowfay is going to be your supplier. She's going to sell you a stability potion for like 500 motes. You're gonna go, you're gonna jump down, you're not gonna take fall damage, don't worry. Come over to Sirius and you are going to either splash it on him or you just give him the stability elixir. And then he will show you that you can put rift transferable items into here. I still haven't even claimed this because obviously this is alpha, it does not matter. And that is Sirius done. So the next thing you're probably thinking, well how do I get the main armor set, the willed armor set? Don't worry, I got you covered. However, to be able to do this, you should probably farm Shies. Now you could get the sword first because the sword is given for free, I'm pretty sure. Otherwise, it doesn't really speed up your grinding at all, but you are going to need around 4,500 motes and you're actually going to need more for all the other stuff in Wild Woods. So instead of just grinding for the armor set, you should start grinding for the Crux Talisman. The Crux Talisman being created by forming eight shy crux in a ring the more of a certain kind of crux that you kill the more rift time and crux fortune you get crux fortune being your chance of dropping two crux instead of one and overall you're going to need a lot of crux for this area i would say probably farming about a stack of crux would be good that puts you at about 6400 motes and you'd have a stack of crux to work with because you need the motes to buy the armor and you need moats and crux to buy Adonata bottles and larva hooks, which I will explain what they are now. I will actually be explaining what they are in a second because if you have grinded up that amount, I'm going to show you where you can get all the armor pieces. The first thing, you come up here, you talk to this three brother and he will say he has a spare weapon. You can get the wield sword for 333 moats and three shy crooks. You can then continue up this tree until you get to the Aerofay Trafficker. Click on him and he will sell you Wild Legs for a thousand motes. Continue up the tree. You don't have to talk to the 10 counter, he is just a waste of time. All he does is, is count to 10. And once you get to the top of this tree, you will see the Bug Shopper. And the Bug Hunter, we will get to these two in a second. But if we want the rest of the armor, we need to head over to this tree. Come into here, talk to Aerofay Trafficker. He will sell you the helmet for a thousand motes. And then you're going to start heading down the tree. 
you will reach this spot where you can talk to this RFA trafficker. He has a little blue tint to him. And you can buy the wheel to chest plate for 2,000 motes. You keep continuing all the way down here and up the ladder. You will find the Arofe Trafficker that sells you the boots for 50 motes. Very, very cheap for those. And here is one of the Arofe Three Brothers. I believe you have to talk to all three of them before you can purchase the, the sword in that tree. However, there, there's just one at the base of every tree because there's three trees. So at this point you have the armor, the weapon, the Enigma Cloak, but you're probably thinking where is the pet? Because there is a pet that you get in this first area that is, is rift specific. You're going to climb the tree closest to the Black Lagoon. And you're going to go through to the edge. You're going to talk to Sad Jackwell. Jackwell has lost her cat and she wants you to search for it. You are going. She's going to tell you to take her dead cat detector which can be found in these chests. You right click them, they won't be there. There will be a chest that appears behind you. Click that. And then if you jump all the way down this way to the base of this tree, the dead cat piece should be right here. Click it, you can claim it. It gives mana regen as well as extra rift time and the more soul pieces you find, the more rift time you get and the more mana regen you get. So now that you have a pet, full armor, enigma cloak, you should get into the actual part of Wild Woods that are Wild Woods specific. Adonata farming. That's also how you're going to get that enigma soul. Now come up here, you're going to talk to Aerofight Bug Hunter. He's going to ask you to bring, to get eight shy crooks to get a larva hook. So you might have to do more shy farming if you don't have that. The other thing about the rift is it is very like friend friendly like if you are doing it with somebody else it will be instantly more efficient because you can both loot share shy crooks while you're farming crooks just get one or two hits on it you can both get that enigma soul and there will be other part there will be other portions in the future that actually require you or are heavily sped up if you have a teammate or multiple te once you have the crooks you need you can come back up to the bug hunter Come to the shop, buy the larva hook, and you're also going to need an Adonata bottle. You're going to need 9 Adonatas total, so that's 18 Shy Crux. And you're also going to need, I believe, 3 or 4 larva hooks because they break after 8 uses. Uh, so that'd be another 32 Shy Crux. So you are going to need a lot of it, which should be leveling up your Crooks tally anyway. So you're going to buy yourself a larva hook. You're going to run around the tree until you find those silkworm larva. Like here, you're going to right click it three times. And you're going to get larva silk. There really isn't a strategy to collecting silk. You're just going to run around until you see the larva and then fully collect them. Once you have yourself eight hooks worth of larva silk, you can start hunting Adonata. Adonata are these little tiny bugs right there that you need the Adonata bottles to be able to get. To actually capture them in a bottle, you need to find two ledges that you can connect to, one being here, and the other one being here, and then you're also going to have a silk wire stick which I believe bug hunter sells you I don't actually remember how you get this I believe bug hunter sells it to you and then you just click to move forward across it and you will just you don't have to hold down anything you just have to trace the adonata with your bottle and you will you will grab it you don't trace it it'll, it'll quote-unquote break out but your water your bottle won't break you'll just have to do it again keep uh, left clicking with the stick and then you will be on the other side these do eventually break I'm not sure what the cooldown is and then for the last enigma soul you do the same thing throw down larva silk over here run all the way over to this tree come up this tree right click the larva silk and you will be able to go across and you have to break the glass by punching it not holding down left click but actually punching it and you will get the last enigma soul in the area once you acquire nine bottled adonata 
You can give eight of them to the bug hunter, and I don't remember what he rewards you with. Oh, he rewards you with the belt. Uh, which my belt is obviously upgraded, but he will reward you with the belt. You can also come over to the bug shopper if you have 2k emotes and a bottle of Donata. You can get the surgery toolkit, which obviously is something for farming larva with other people. It's to help get more larva silk. And it also is an uncommon accessory, but it is not rift transferable. After that, really the only thing you have left to do is to come back to the wizard's tower. I don't exactly remember when you're supposed to talk to Elise, but just remember you are supposed to do that at some point. Come all the way up here, come up this ladder. You're going to kill this intruder, which isn't actually killing him, it's just like taming him. And from then on you will be able to use him to teleport to other areas. That's also why you talk to Portal. I don't remember if you do this at Black Lagoon or if you do it now, but at some point you need to talk to Elise and she'll send you to the overworld, you say caramel, she'll give you the rift necklace in the overworld, and she will show you the rift gallery, which is in here, and if you are looking for another cat piece, there is one in the gallery, you hit the button, it will eventually open this up, and boom, another Montezuma soul piece. And with that, everything should basically be done except for Reed's boat, but Reed's boat is something that you come back to, you just need eight more larva silk i believe so if you want to farm those now before you go to the next area but you can't complete this until you go to black lagoon we are getting into black lagoon which is a little bit smaller of an area actually i'd say it's a pretty small area compared to the rest of the areas on this map but to start you run over here you talk to Telkar. Telkar will tell you a story you'll have to click through it um it'll take a while it's like three or four minutes long but then he will also he will reward you this block will turn into an enigma soul so that will be your first enigma soul and you will obviously pay the time to enter there's a lot of things in this area obviously i care a lot about time so i'm just going to be showing you the next way to get enigma souls do not get hit by dredge hogs they reduce your time by a lot but the next easiest way to get an enigma soul is to take these heads and line all the e's up towards this quote unquote runic tree and you can do this like this and that will open and here will be your second enigma soul if i can get to it without the dredge hog killing me your third will be here this is a uh, super easy like cave parkour kind of cool though if you touch the water you get teleported back if you touch the dirt in the next area you get teleported back But you run all the way through and you can touch this dirt and you will get your third enigma soul there are only five in this area and you already have three out of the way super super quick the next thing you should probably do is make your way over to reed reed is stranded over there to be able to do that you cannot swim you have to jump into the water and a lagoon leech will come back after you. Lagoon leeches are nice because they give you lily pads. And they also give you 250 moats. So they're actually not bad for killing moats at the very beginning. But you also have to be the one to get the kill. You then take these lily pads just like this guy did. And you place them down as you run across. You have to do it the entire way. Otherwise there will be a current that pushes you away. Come over here you can talk to K. K will buy your excess lily pads, otherwise you are going to need them for crafting recipes. Come over here, talk to Reed. Reed will say they're stranded here, they need help gathering supplies, and then for each subsequent area you unlocked, you'll have to get another supply for Reed. The first supply is you need 16 larva silk, I believe I said 8 in the last video, but you're going to need 16 larva silk from Wild Woods, which you can just go get right away. And then the next thing you're not going to be able to get until you get to the next area. The other thing that is here is Roy. I went up the wrong ladder. The next thing that is here is Roy. Roy will sell you an Enigma Soul. And he will sell you an Enigma Soul for 4,000 moats and 8 dredge hog spines. Before you leave this area, also make sure to come down here. Get your little laser eye that can teleport you back. And if you want to get back, 
you can either pay 200 motes and K will throw you over the water or you can swim back. Swimming back might lose you a little bit of time if you get hit by the leeches, but you can also make a lot of the lily pads that way. Here is how you kill dredge hogs. You're going to hit them once until you can't hit them anymore. These mushrooms grow really big. Go on F5, block all the arrows because the arrows do take a lot of time off from you. I'm not very good at dodging apparently. And you come back out and you will kill the dredge hog. Arrows are useful because you can craft a lot of things with them. You can upgrade your dredge hog mask. And I believe there are other uses for it that are just simply slipping my mind. But you're definitely going to want to upgrade your mask and then you can run all the way over here to the right side. Talk to Dr. Edwin. He's going to be saying that he did a lot of research with K. So you're going to have to get all the way back over there with K. You can either run across using lily pads again, or you can go back to that eye and teleport across. The lily pads would probably be the easier way. After talking to K, she will give you research paper, which is basically leeches are bad, kill them all. Dr. Edwin will say, okay, this is great, and you will be able to fight the first boss, which is the Supreme Leech. You're going to have to fight this boss a couple times because you need multiple leech fragments. Before you go in and fight it, though, you need the leech fragments for the time charm, which you're going to need more bottled adonatas, lily pads, dredge hog spines, that was the other use for it. And you can also upgrade the belt that you got from, from the bug hunter. And you can also upgrade your, your wild sword into a leech sword. And the only other thing before entering the boss fight is you can swim your way up here. And you can get the third Montezuma soul. These guys just beat the supreme leech. And I'm not sure what the respawn timer is. So let me just swap lobbies and then I'll show you the fight. The other use for these leech supreme fragments are you're going to want a two stacks of lily pads. You can make the aspect of the leech. It's basically the aspect of the end except lesser, but you can upgrade it with tuners because tuners are rift transferable. So you're going to want to do the boss three times and you'll be able to do every single one of these. The boss isn't hard. You actually do get a decent amount of moats killing the leeches that the boss spawns. So first of all, you run in. He's going to fight back. Basically has a similar like type of hitting you as like uh, Diana mobs. After you hit him, I think for uh, a decent amount of health, this green blob will come out. It'll send shockwaves your way, jump over the shockwaves. If you get hit, you lose time. It's kind of that way for a lot of things in the rift. If you get hit, you lose time like that. And that took off 90 seconds. I believe it takes off a percentage. After that, he will come back out. You're gonna fight him again. Eventually he'll get scared and leave again. He'll start casting bombs. The bombs are really easy to avoid. Don't stand on the dark green clay. Supreme Leech will come back out. Smack him around a little bit more. Obviously you can have people help you. At this point he'll start sending leeches up. And you can kill them. They will give you moats. They also take off time as you get hit, obviously. I'm not sure if the Supreme Leech gives more moats than the other ones. It does not, so they all give 250 moats no matter what. The more people here, the more leeches that come up though, I am noticing, because there are not normally this many leeches with just one person. This is actually my first time fighting the boss. I fought the boss like five times, it's my first time fighting it without or w without being alone. And for the last thing, there will be a laser that you have to jump over. Like so, if you get hit, it'll launch you. It'll go up a little bit, and to dodge that, you go sink down. And you sit on the ladders. The ladders do break, so you do have to time it. Otherwise, if you hit the water and bounce back up, it's only a couple of seconds that are getting removed versus like 20 if you get hit by the laser. The water will also shoot you back up. Will is clearly not very good at this because his time is about to run out. Oh, and he did not get the frags. <laughs> that sucks. That sucks. But anyways, that's the uh, Supreme Leech down. 
it will send you back up and out into the lake or back over here last time I got sent out to the lake so they must have changed it but do that until you get yourself a supreme time charm leech belt leech sword aspect of the leech they're all very very useful and then you will head to the gallery head over to black lagoon place it she will upgrade your rift necklace it'll also be upgraded in the overworld and that's about it for black lagoon so the last thing i forgot to mention is the fifth enigma soul if you come all the way over here across that little water you come talk to the mushroom guy he won't tell you anything very smart but the last enigma soul is up there i would wait until you get an aspect of the leech for this oh you actually can't use the aspect of the leech for this so the way i did it was I got two silkworms, I put, I jumped up and I believe I put one there and then I put one here and I just climbed up and I grabbed it. But I kind of thought you would be able to use the aspect of leech, but that, so you're going to have to use two uh, larva silk, place one here, jump up, right click one there, uh, use your silk wire stick to cross the top and grab it. This is West Village Guide, Rift Guide Part 3, let's get into it. So after completing the Black Lagoon, you're going to cross this bridge, you're going to head over this way. West Village has a new mob, and it's they're called Shadows. You hit them three times, they will run around, and they will try to bounce up blocks on you. If they do, they will take a minute off of your Rift Timer, so it does kind of suck to get hit by them. After killing a certain amount of these, you can upgrade your Crux Talisman to a Crux Ring. You can also use them to upgrade your boots as well as your leggings, but those leggings are like a very, very late game rift upgrade, so don't worry about those right now. If you want to complete this in order of entrance and not in order of usefulness, because at this point you have a lot of rift time doing the other stuff, you can kind of just do it in order. The first thing that took me forever to figure out is this area right here is where the hacker is unhinged coon. I could not find this area for the life of me. I thought this was sectioned off. I thought it was a part of Village Plaza. It's not. If you talk to unhinged coon, he will allow you to take a retro encabulating visor. It, it was initially free. I don't know if they added a price to it or if it's just priced because I already did the quest. But if it is pricey, then it's 1k motes. And what you're going to do is you're going to put the head on and it will show these eight lines of particles. You have to make sure you have particles on. And basically what you do is you follow these particles as a path. And you will see that they start to split off. And so you follow them. They eventually go into this house. Follow them down into the basement of the house. Now for the longest time, I did not realize that it was the far right particle that goes down. So there are eight lines of particles, one for each color of the rainbow. So you come down, now I can't show you the actual game, but there will be numbers flashing across. There'll be arrows on one side for every other uh, lane. When the arrows are on the right side, the numbers are moving to the right. When the arrows are on the left side, the numbers are moving to the left. And you have to click whatever number is on top. You have to align it right there and click and go down. I did down in a slash because nothing worked for me. I don't know if anything else does work. But I would just do first row, line it up, second row, line it up, third, line it up, fourth, line it up, fifth, line it up. And then when you're done, you have to set your terminal to a color. The colors, in order, are from the farthest right to the farthest left. So this first one is going to be red. And you run over here to the alchemist. And the alchemist is going to be orange. And keep in mind, you're going to have to complete that little mini game for all of these. I've heard that some people, if you had trouble with like melodies, you might have trouble with this. I did not have trouble with this, but if the server is lagging at release, it probably is going to be pretty tough. This next one is yellow. Going back, it's going to be the next one on the right side, which is going to be green. Keep running forward and keep in mind this next one is your left split so you're going to be starting from the other side of the rainbow which is going to be pink and then this middle house 
It's going to be purple. And then this house is going to be blue. You run all the way over here, over by the water tower. And you will be able to do aqua. Once you complete all of that, run back to Unhinged Clune. You will talk to him, he'll say that he was able to stop Big Mare, and you will be able to trade a thousand motes for a defective monitor, which is another accessory, it gives another minute of rift time and more intelligence, which is very valuable. You can then take the mask off and never touch the mask again. The next thing you're going to run into is Gunther's Race. It's going to be this first house on the left. You're going to hit Start Racing. You're going to run up, run out, come this way on top of the roof, and you're going to hit these checkpoints in order. Come that way. And this is a jump where you need to jump to this block, not this top gold block. Grab that one. Grab the top over here, jump down there. Like this, and you will come across these trees and back into this window and stop at the top of his bed. You need to run the first race in 60. If you run the next one in under 35 seconds, Gunther rewards you with the Gunther like Lichten or whatever it is, and you will be able to upgrade your boots. The next thing, if we are going in order, is going to be the Mirrorverse. Now this is where you're going to get your next time charm, and this is the main thing in the West Village. It costs three minutes rift time to enter, but the cool thing is the rift time does not actually count in here. So looking at it, you have Dr. Emmett right here, and for me, he's going to ask me if I have a specific room because I've already uh, beaten it all, but he will explain to you about the Mirrorverse and to be able to get through the first puzzle. You look, you see levers, you click the levers, and it will open up for you right there. You fall back down, going in F5 is definitely going to be the easiest way to do this. You can't actually walk into lava. It'll It'll just kind of bounce you back, but it'll, if you do it too many times, it'll say, oh, you burned in lava, and it will, uh, ooh, I didn't realize you could skip that. Uh, well, basically, it'll say you get, like, two burned, and then it'll send you back to the beginning, you have to do it again. Uh, but you do this, and I'm not too great at mirror movement, but eventually you snake your way through. And once you're through, you can click the lever on the right side, it'll open it up, and it will let you through. This room, also pretty easy. You see in the mirror there are mobs. You like you click somewhere in front of them and you'll be able to kill them. You'll be able to get string, which is backwards. You'll be able to get slime balls and you will be able to get wood. Now everything in this crafting bench is going to be backwards. So if you're creating a bow, normally you do three string, stick, stick, stick. You would do the other way, string, stick, stick, stick and you will also craft this top area backwards and it will give you this lever. Oh, it's actually gonna make me do it. You will get yourself a tiny hammer. I don't remember exactly what the tiny hammer is useful for, but I know it is useful for something. Oh, you just right click the lever with the hammer. This next area is going to be parkour. Parkour is always my favorite. You can talk to Dr. Emmett. You're gonna head over here. You're gonna turn on hard mode. That way you actually get the talisman at the end while you're completing it and you're just going to run through and it is mirrored on top so if you ever don't know where to go you can look up however do be careful because the areas do end up breaking but you can also just memorize me doing it right here i got it relatively quickly otherwise it does take a little bit of time to learn where to turn and it is tough looking up at times while you are parkouring. It is probably good that I am practicing it right now because when it comes out on the main server, I want to be able to fly with it. And people look at me and go, how did you do it first time? Ah. 
go up to the side. That's what you And then climb back up this way. You'll be able to open the chest, you'll be able to get the test bucket. Please ignore, which is an uncommon accessory, which is rift transferable. Obviously, you can recom it and all that good stuff. This next room, you have mirrored rumors. Or mirrored rooms, not rumors. I don't know why I said rumors. The way it works, you click on the glass to swap between that side, the other side freezes. And you'll be able to do it like this. Like, for example, click this side. Whichever side is green is the side that you're on. You see that pressure plate. You're going to go back. Opens the door. You're going to click that to freeze your body on top of it. And you're going to be able to walk through. And you do the same thing this way. So you go like this. Open up that door. Like that. Open up that door. Like that. Open up that door. Like that. Open up that door. One last time, come back, open up that door, and then you swap and you can go through. This next one is a little tricky. Now you jump down and you make sure that you're staying on top of that. This last room is 100% optional. However, if you do want the big brain talisman, you need to do it. It honestly, I don't, I didn't think it was that difficult. I don't, I don't know why it it says it's so difficult. You're gonna start over here on that pressure plate. Come down, click. It will send you up. Open the door. Click the button. Come down. Get boosted on top. You're going to freeze that. Hit that pressure plate. It's going to open these doors. You're then going to swap to this side. You're going to hit that button. You're going to get sent back up here. And you are going to hit this button. Swap back. And it should boost you up here. After hitting this pressure plate, it will open the door to the next room and you will be able to open and get your big brain talisman this next one really really simple you're just gonna move you're gonna follow the commands a lot of people hate this this is how you get the tiny dancer talisman I don't see too much of an issue with it I don't understand why so many people have a problem with it probably because when it's lagging it's very hard to do but eventually you get the hang of it so sometimes when it lags it's actually impossible however as long as you are focusing on the beat it's not that hard and you should be able to do it anyways you keep going for the tiny dancer talisman i kind of suck at it so i'm not going to waste my time doing it now we'll figure that out on release day but anyway you keep going eventually you start punching and i'm not really sure what you do because i never got it but if you want to invest that much time on getting on an alpha be my guest this next room you talk to Dr. Emmett he's going to give you this thing called a laser pointer if you want the talisman at the end you can't use any checkpoints just so you're aware you get a little bit of jump boost you can skip the first one come to the second one which is going to be right here it will highlight for you the easiest way to do this in my opinion is go to the corner of your block find your next block go into F5 to see how far away it is and then just just tap jump um, it's going to be similar for the far away ones and you're just going to want to sprint jump. Kind of use the mirror as a guide. And it definitely is not easy, but it's also not the most impossible thing in the world. And I ended up falling on that one. I'm just going to keep going through the checkpoints just to show you guys. Anyway, kind of the same strategy. Obviously, I will be getting the talisman on release. Um, it's not a huge deal. But you're going to keep going up until the top. 
And once you make it up to the top, if you do not use any checkpoints, you can grab your talisman right there. Otherwise, come over here into your reward room and he will reward you with 60,000 motes. You can claim your Mirrorverse time charm, which you are going to need 10 Shadow Cruxes. So make sure to get 10 Shadow Cruxes before you enter. You're going to need another 12 for your Iron Chest Plate. And you can also get Reflection Book Bundles, which are Rift Transferable, which can go on your armor. Grants 2 Intelligence, 1 True Defense, and when damaged by an arrow, do times 2 your Intelligence to its shooter. Once you beat it, you don't have to re-beat it, you can just go teleport to the last room. So if you don't have these Shadow Crux beforehand, you can do it after, and you should be able to purchase everything. If you want the reflection books, you can spend the motes you just got on them. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend blowing all of your motes on reflection because then it's going to take longer for you to progress. And we have not reached an area where you can sufficiently grind for motes yet. Anyway, you exit and you come on out. The next thing you're going to do is you may have seen a big fireball before. When I led you through the hacker thing, there's going to be a sorcerer up here. He's going to be holding it. He's going to give you a warding diamethane, and he's going to tell you where all these different glyphs are found. Basically, you're going to go run. You're going to find them. The first glyph, the first glyph is somewhere around the pond. I don't exactly remember. I'm not sure if I can still see the spots or not. The spots are pretty self-explanatory. When it says that there's one in the cake. There's going to be one in the cake. It's going to be on the second floor. When it says it's going to be next to a glutton, you're going to come in here and it will be... I think it's under the stair. So yeah, I don't think I can see them anymore. Um, the only one I really got tripped up on was the water tower one. So this is the water tower. I totally forgot about that. And it's like... It's either it's somewhere around it. I don't exactly remember. It might be up on a ledge. It might be just down here. But every time you get a glyph, you return to him. He'll say, "Oh, there's a new thing on one side of the house. Drop on that side of the house. It's going to be a big thing of particles that you have to trace. And if you're not perfect, as long as you don't break the chain, you can go back and fix it. And you'll get it. Come back up. Talk to him. It's like seven or eight or nine glyphs in total. And once you finally do that." You can talk to him and he will reward you with an epic accessory. It gives you intelligence and rift time. Once again, requiring Shadow Crux. You're going to need a lot, a lot of Shadow Crux. The next thing you're going to want to do is head over to Cat. She will give you this uh, Turbo Max vacuum cleaner. You're going to have to clean up this house that's just full of vermin. You see there's silverfish over there. There's spiders over here. There's flies flying around it. And as you do that, you'll be able to get the Disinfestor Gloves. As you can see, you just have to deposit four flies, four spiders, four silverfish into the vermin bin. Um, they're all pretty similar. If you run up to the silverfish, you will grab it. If you suck on the fly, it will teleport around, but it will get closer and closer and closer, and eventually you'll grab it. And for the spiders, you will just hover over them again, and eventually they will get whipped, stripped off their web. You come over here, you deposit. And the upgrades are Disinfestor Gloves, Vermin Belt, which are 15 flies, the Rift Ferret, which is not something you can use in the Rift, but it is transferable outside of the Rift, which costs 12 Rift Wart Roots. To get those Rift Wart Roots, you're going to have to wait until you get into Dread Farm. And then, but you can keep going past this. You just need to get 40 Silverfish, and then you'll be able to use 500 most to get the optional reward, which is this Enigma Soul. And you can also get the last thing, which I would not recommend until it comes out on the main server, which you can use to upgrade your Tarantula Pet and Spider Pet to Mythic Rarity in the real world. That's Cat, pretty simple. On to the Enigma Souls, they're not very hard to find in this area. The first one, if you jump, if you, you can talk to Cosmo if you want, you don't have to. You can jump down here into this area. You'll do some dolphin parkour all the way to the end. I'll let you experience it for on your own. It's pretty sick. And there will be an Enigma Soul there. There's the Enigma Soul for Cat, which is two of seven. Another 
Enigma Soul is going to be found in the cake house is actually going to be two. There's going to be one down into the left on the first floor, and then there's going to be one if you go up the stairs up here, there's going to be another one on the second floor. You're also going to have to make your way to the hot dog house. It's really simple. You're going to walk up to the chef. You're going to have him start the contest. He'll say hot dog contest starting. He'll have a plate. You will go run around, grab the hot dogs, place it down in front of him. He'll eat them. If he eats 50, you will be granted with an Enigma Soul. There is also an Enigma Soul here midair. You're going to need two la uh, larva silk and you can attach on any part, house to house, house to house, any part, mine the glass, get the soul. Same way as always. And then the last soul, the last soul is actually found on top of the hot dog house. It requires two people. It's like a bomb diffuse type thing. There will be a grid and you'll tell somebody uh, A1 or uh, A2 and they will go onto the other side and they will go to A2 and they'll click it. Obviously I'm one person, I can't do it. I actually haven't gotten this because I haven't found someone to help me get this Enigma Soul. But that is where the last one is found. The very, very last thing is the Montezuma Soul piece in this area. So you're going to want to figure out a way to make your way on top of these houses. Which I guess I didn't really have to TP up, I can just bounce up over here. And you're going to want to... Parkour, just like you're doing the parkour race, all the way over to this house over here. And you're probably going to need to use your leech to get on top of it. And you will find the Montezuma soul piece right there. And with that, go place your time charm in the gallery, go upgrade your necklace, and that is it for West Village. This is Dread Farm. Let's get into it. So after you complete West Village, you're going to come over here. They're attached to each other, so you, you can actually spill into Dread Farm when you're in West Village. I did that. I would recommend against it because it, it made me very confused. The next crux in this area is called the Vault. You hit it three times, and you can either go onto the save squares, and it will lightning. Otherwise, you can just run away, and it will lightning. At this point, the best way to get moats are definitely just to find like a set of vaults that spawn next to each other, like this vault. He'll hit it, and he'll start doing his lightning. You come over here, and you hit this vault, and he'll start doing his lightning. And you come over here, you do this vault, and he'll start doing his lightning. And you can just come back to the first one and kill him because his animation is over. These ones are nice because you don't actually have to do anything to get through their animation to finish killing them. And they give 160 motes each and the Volt Crux that you get also sells for 100. Looking at the Volt Crux, farming 16 of these you'll be able to craft the Crux Artifact as well as you can get exportable carrots, which don't matter for right now, and chicken legs. Chicken legs you can't obtain right now until you actually do the main quest, which is probably what I would recommend you do first. If you talk to Shania, she's going to say she or she's going to give you the wand of farming, which allows you to farm crops in the rift, and she's gonna say she needs from you two Agarica's cap bunches and two two Katika stem bunches as well as uh, two wilted Berberus bunches. So just just a bunch of bunches. Uh, the way you farm these different crops are all different. This one you have to start mining from the top down. It's 20 of each to make the bunch by the way. These you have to farm the ones with particles on so you have to make sure that you have particles on it transfers between the two. The wilted Berberus is the fastest thing to farm. And then there are also the mushrooms. The mushrooms, I hate farming the mushrooms. But you will look at the mushrooms. And they will turn red just like that. Sorry, I didn't have my hand in my mouth. When they turn red is when you can mine them. And you will get the cap caps. Once you have all of that, you return. You give the thing to Shania. Shania will give you the proto chicken. Which is used in crafting the... It's using crafting the Dread Farm Time Charm. Uh, you're gonna want to farm all these because number one, it's a collection, and number two, you are going to need the Berberus Blowgun as well as there's also 
a helmet upgrade, and other cool stuff that you can unlock. The blowgun is in the Wilted Berberus collection. It's 60 of them to be able to craft it. It's also 60 of them. The way the blowgun works, you right click, it'll fire an arrow, it costs five mana. You can actually test that on these balloons right here to get an Enigma Soul. Like so, it'll drop, open up an Enigma Soul, there's your first one. What it's mostly used for is killing the chickens to be able to get metaphoric eggs. You need metaphoric eggs for the time charm as well as a Catawist stem bunch, a Agricus cap bunch, Wilted Berberus bunch, a bunch of metaphoric eggs and the proto chicken, as well as to be able to craft the chicken legs and some bolt crux, which is your upgrade to your legs. But also now that you have the wand of farming, you can head back to Cat if you would like to get the Rift Ferret. Because initially we skipped over Cat because we were unable we were unable to obtain Rift Wart Roots. Rift Wart Roots are going to be this Nether Wart to be able to farm it. You click it, it's gonna send your screen randomly, and it is very awful to farm. I hate it. But if you get 12 of these using the wand of farming, you'll be able to get the Rift Wart needed for the Rift Ferret. Moving on, there's not much left in Dread Farm aside from your souls. You can come over here and kill the Baba Yaga for a teleport here. You need to get Wilted Berberus for Reed, and you will be able to, if you did unlock the eye at his thing, you will be able to teleport there, give it to him. And then the only thing left are the three remaining fairy souls and the Montezuma piece. The Montezuma piece requires, it is behind this breakable wall, it requires an item found in the next area, so you can't actually get it yet. However, if you come over here, we already got one from the balloons. You will also be able to get one from following these flower pots up this tree. You can find a way to TP up. And stand right here uh, it should show you an enigma soul and you'll be able to get that that'll be your second enigma soul to get your third you actually need to come back to West Village come over here to plumber Joe you'll need to purchase one of his water buckets for 2,000 moats they're very expensive I know but once you get it you can come back over this way to this beanstalk sprout now you don't run out of water, you need to water this thing up like 12 times at the very top, it'll give you an Enigma Soul. It was bugged before, I don't know if it's bugged now, so I'm not actually going to do it, and it also takes forever, but you get the idea. For the last soul, it's called Buttons. I didn't actually get this one yet because I did not know that it was only wooden buttons. There will be wooden buttons on the houses, and there's 56 of them, and they will get particles when you tap on them. I was very confused before. Cause I was like, where are their buttons? And I went over the water tower, uh, wherever the water tower is, the water tower is not how you do it. But I was told that if you look on the outside of these houses, there should be a ton of wooden buttons that you can hit and you will be able to get your button soul. You can also use a blow dart for this if you would like. And I was missing the last four buttons on the cake house. And then you will get an Enigma Soul at the basement of Sorcerer Okron's house, which is back over here. Last but not least for Dread Farm, head over here, and you will need 64 Wilted Berberus, which shouldn't take that long to get. This is the Plaza for the Rift Guide Village Plaza. Let's get into it. So after Dread Farm, you're going to come over here. The first thing is you're going to have another kind of crux. These things are scribes. They're going to spawn coal blocks. You just have to look at them, turn them into gold blocks, and you can kill the scribe and you will get yourself scribe crux. You can get 16 of these to upgrade your crux uh, artifact to the crux relic, and you're also going to use for the exportable carrots. The other thing that you might notice is there is this big thing. It's called a temporal uh, pillar. If you run into it, your screen turns black and all your remaining time vanishes. I don't know why it's a thing, I don't know what it's supposed to do, but it only exists in Village Plaza. Getting into the main part of the stuff, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is head over to the community center 
and do Barry's quest, which is what is going to get you your time charm for this area. There's going to be a lot of like protesters. You're going to talk to them, blah, blah, blah. You come back here, talk to Barry. Barry's going to tell you, hey, I need help getting all these protesters out of here. You come back, you're going to have to do individual stuff for each one. One of them, you have to figure out like how much, how much money in taxes she owes. One of them, you're going to have to do math homework, just kind of basic stuff like that. Once you do that, he will reward you with, uh, I don't seem to have it anymore, but it's a lever and you come all the way to the back of here to the election box and you can claim yourself the Skybox Citizen Chime, uh, Time Charm with 16 Scribe Crux and that's the main part of Village Plaza. You can then talk to Seraphine. Seraphine's going to be horribly disfigured if you actually help her out you will get your helmet upgrade which is the furthest helmet upgrade as of right now that's 1500 motes in an agrar an agaricus cap cap but to be able to help her she's going to send you over to the alchemist you come over here before the alchemist would not talk to you now they will you will say you need a potion she's going to say i can make you an anti-morph potion but you're gonna have to get me the ingredients first ingredient is water you're already gonna have water from when you grew up the sprout Put the water in. She is then going to tell you that you need 64 Riftwort, which Riftwort kind of sucks to farm. But once you get 64 of these, you can go and put them in. And then you're going to need four of this thing called Catechus Extract. For each one, you need 20 Catechus. You're going to need 80 Catechus stems total, but you also need three Plumber's Buckets. I'm not sure if the Plumber's Buckets are supposed to get removed after you use them. But they do as of right now. So that also means you're going to need 12k moats. You're going to have to blow 12k moats on plumber's buckets. Make the four catechus extracts. Come back over here. Give it to her. She will give you your potion. You run all the way back over to Seraphine. And you can splash the bottle on Seraphine. She still looks kind of wonky. But you will get her old face. Moving on. The next coolest thing you could do is come over here. I'm gonna try not to get sucked into the temporal thing. You're gonna talk to Detective Amog. Uh, he's going to tell you there has been a reverse murder and you're going to try to figure out who killed Romero. You're gonna go on this big goose chase. You're gonna come over, you're gonna talk to him. He's going to give you this thing called a detective scanner. There's going to be particles on all these different items. You're going to use it on them. It's going to sniff, 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 tell you what the clue is. You're going to report it back to him. You're going to do that for the entire house. And then you're going to end up figuring out that you need to go visit a florist. The florist is running the flower shop for Marco as of right now. Come over, talk to her. She'll claim I'm in love with Romero, blah, 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 blah. And he's going to say that you need to find the master tactician fink at the coliseum this guy took me forever to find it i i don't know why it, it uh, they send you to the coliseum and then they don't tell you that it's like all the way on the back of the coliseum like i ran around the coliseum and i missed this i don't know how i missed these guys but i did anyway they should be standing either at this tree or at that tree i think it's this tree i'm not exactly sure and what he's going to do is he's going to upgrade your leech sword to a tactician murder weapon for a certain amount of moats and he's going to say okay now we need to get back to romero's house to look for more clues you're gonna run all the way back run all the way back to the house you're gonna use this detective scanner on this painting realize that the dress was like just made you're gonna come over here to Taylor. They're gonna be in the basement. There's gonna be Joliet down here. Taylor, talk to Joliet. You're gonna end up coming back to Romero's house after. It's gonna be barricaded. You're gonna click something in chat. It's gonna blow it up. You're gonna go in, and you are the one that kills Romero. It's crazy. So you smack him a bunch, and you end up getting the Ring of Broken Love, which gives you plus 80 rift seconds, which is nice. That's a lot of rift seconds. Talk to a mog. And he'll say, uh, you did well, blah, 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 but that is the murder mystery. The next thing you can do is walk up to Seymour. You'll be able to buy his fancy boots, which as of right now are the highest tier boots. These cost 50,000 moats and Gunther's stinkers. So keep in mind, you're going to need a lot of moats for it. That's really what you're blowing the moats from the Mirrorverse on. The next thing you're going to want to do is head over here. Unlock the teleport 
for the bankster so that you can just teleport to this area and the last thing you have to do before uh enigma souls is you have cowboy nick you talk to cowboy nick he's going to give you this horse cannon it's actually pretty fun a horse zooka you fire it at hay bales it'll open up and what you need to do is you need to farm these carrots there is a collection for these carrots to be able to do that you talk to cowboy nick he'll spawn dallas i hate dallas dallas is the pain of my existence you have to like sprint at him to scare him away from you if you run like in front of him he will start running backwards i hate it but you have to try to scare him over into the carrots and he will start farming them he'll get you like half nibbled carrots and these all count towards your collection which is nice uh, the hay does respawn, so if the hay respawns and squishes him, you just have to talk to uh, Cowboy Nick, he'll get you another one. But uh, you get a bunch of these half-eaten carrots, and what you need to do is you need to get uh, seven nearly whole carrots and give them to him. He will reward you with another page of rift storage, which is really nice. And also what you can do is if you collect enough carrots, you can get yourself the orange chest plate which I believe is the one, yeah, it is the one I'm wearing. It is the furthest display as of right now. And if you make it all the way through the carrot collection, you'll be able to make carrot on a stick, which he, which Dallas will actually follow you then, which I'm guessing will make farming carrots so much easier. After that, there's only so many things you need to do. You need to get 128 half eaten carrots for Reed's boat. And then there are two Montezuma pieces. The first one is in the florist house. If you click on the books, it'll say live in the moment. You click on that, there'll be one right here. The second one is back on the other side of this bank, and you have to wait for that to be green. It'll be over here, and you can grab that right here. One thing I definitely forgot to mention is that it, you get hit by anvils, but and you lose time. But you are going to end up visiting the blacksmith at some point during the murder mystery. I don't exactly remember when. Uh, I think if I take cover, I'll be fine. Yeah, if you take cover, you'll be fine. Uh, so you're going to talk to him. He's going to say, are you going to pay off Romero's tab? You're going to say no. And then I think you end up going to see Juliet. But that is just one thing I forgot to find. But those are both the Montezuma parts on to the fairy souls. So starting over in Nick's cave gonna head all the way to the back well there is an enigma soul somewhere in this cave and i can't seem to find it so i'm sorry i don't have the exact location but i'm sure you guys will find it i'm sure you guys are smart the next thing you need to do is you can either get dallas to do it or usually there is a rabbit up here called moody if you get him to sit right here like at all this hay block will turn into enigma soul and you can grab that right there you're also going to need your Berberus blowgun. You can shoot down these balloons and that will lead to another Enigma Soul right there, three of eight. If you jump into the portal to your island, you can actually use the tiny hammer to mine this wood. You don't actually have to use the tiny hammer, it just speeds it up. Then you can proceed to bridge across, the parkour jump, and that'll be right there. You can talk to Jerry for some funny dialogue, head back. There is another Enigma Soul right here, which requires silk from there to there. I think by this point you guys get it. And then the last three, there's going to be a flea spook that you end up following on top of the on top of the bank first and then on top of the auction house that will reveal an Enigma Soul. There's going to be there's going to be someone sitting up here where the bazaar manager normally would be. You talk to him, you're gonna give him a certain it's like 25,000 or 15,000 motes. It's it's a scam but you end up like getting an enigma soul out of it because you're like, man, I should not just trust random people anymore. Then the last soul, I sat with this dude. You have to sit with this guy. His name is Avalik. You sit at a table. He will TP to your table. You have to get up and move to a different table. It's kind of annoying. I don't remember how long you have to sit. I thought it was five minutes and I sat for five and a half and then you can actually claim it because you can't claim it right away. You have to sit with him. I think it's five minutes, it might be a little bit less, you can test it, but let me know in the comments if it is. And with that, every part of Village Plaza should be done, other than Shen's Auction. The issue with Shen's Auction is you need the Globulet Time Charm to get it. It's either the Globulet or the 
living cave time charm. One of the two, I don't remember which one. But one last thing that we have to do with the Horzuka is we have to head back to Dread Farm, all the way back here to that breakable wall, fire the horse at it, and we will get another piece of Montezuma. This is the living cave. Let's get into it. So, you're gonna walk through here, you're gonna find out this is the living cave. There's a lot of stuff here. The first thing you're gonna see, probably, is an auto knoll. Killing an auto knoll, this is not going to be a kind of crux, but they're going to spawn like glass blocks that you have to mine before you can actually kill them. And then you kill them, and they will drop 400 motes and a nullified metal. This is by far the best moat grinding method that I have found is farming auto nulls because they just give because the auto the metal sells for 100 each, so they give 500 motes per kill. It's just a ton of motes. You're going to use these nullified metals to upgrade your tactician murder weapon into the self recursive pickaxe. You can also do it from the leech sword, which is what I did originally because I was stuck on the on the murder quest, so I upgraded from the leech sword, so that's why I was actually in my other parts, you saw me making a tactician sword as we went through it. But that requires wilted berberus, which you can get from dread farm, and nullified metals. You're going to need this because what you do in this area is you find yourself a piece of lapis and it will say 1 out of 10 and you will have to mine 10 pieces of lapis before it multiplies to times 2 and if it runs out of blocks to transfer to it'll just give you your living metal otherwise if you get all the way up to complete times 4 you'll get 20 living metal you use the, the living metal to make boot spawn uh, chest spawn pants spawn and cap spawn if you make it into a spawn egg, you can spawn the individual piece of armor, like so. So this is, this would be boots. They spawn the diamond blocks, which is why you need to turn your sword into a pickaxe so that you can mine them. You can just kind of slap them away. Then you go and you kill him, and it will spawn a piece. You need to right click it and it will say it juices it up a certain amount. I believe you need eight egg spawns of each type to get 100% juiced up armor. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less. I'm not 100% on, on how many you need, but just grind that until you have your armor at 100%. Once you have your armor at 100%, you can then come down here into this area. Now, the first thing you should notice is you have another kind of crux where if you get it down to like one hit, it fires icicles at you, which takes away time. If you don't destroy that ice, it will blow up a bomb, which takes away three minutes, but you can get yourself Frosty Crux. Obviously, Frosty Crux can be used to upgrade your Crux Relic to a Crux Heirloom, as well as you need 20 of them to make the Living Charm, as well as Living Metal. But the reason why you infused up your armor is because living metal down here is multiplied by two, so it's way easier to get living metal. I did not know this at the time, but I know it now. So before we got four living metal, we should get eight or six, because that one would have been three. So you get double the living metal, which is really nice because you need a lot of living metal. You need two stacks of it for the living metal anchor, which you need for Reed's quest, and you're also going to need to get living metal hearts. Living metal hearts are awful to get. Here's how you get it. So you, it's really easy if you have a partner. Because you see these snakes moving across with the lapis head. I didn't know what they were. I know what they are now. They're called snakes. So you're going to want to find one that's in a decent spot. Which, this one is in a decent spot. You're going to look at the head. And you need to get this item called a frozen water punji. You right click on the head and you have to start mining this snake down from the tail. You can do it solo, however, it is much easier to have someone do this and then, that, and then someone else mine it down, rather than having to constantly swap back and forth to be able to actually mine the snake. You have to mine from the tail first. You just have to keep swapping back to try to charm him. Once you, can, once you finish it, you'll get a living metal heart. How do you get the frozen water punji? 
to mine ice. Once you get two stacks of this frozen water and eight nullified metals, you can make yourself a frozen water punji, as well as holy ice, which I haven't made yet. I don't think it really matters. As of right now, it doesn't matter. It definitely seems like a very useful item for Vampire Slayer. So the cave is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a lot of grinding, but it is it was one of my favorite parts when I was first grinding through it. So you made the pickaxe, you juiced up your suit, you maxed out choosing up your suit, you got metal hearts. It took me a little bit to figure out how to make the level uh, living hearts. You need to make your time charm. You need to craft the crux heirloom from Frazils. And then the only thing that you haven't done yet is, well, I showed you how to make the living anchor. You go give it to Reed, obviously, is we need Montezuma's eight piece. And we also need the two Enigma souls. First of all, the Montezuma piece. There are going to be rocks inside the cave. You can actually talk to these rocks. They will tell you a bunch of stuff. Apparently in rock culture, it's considered bad use rocks as pets you're gonna find this rock right here his life goal is to kill two birds you're gonna mine this piece of snow here's the Montezuma piece you're then gonna come back to the middle sneak to go up you're gonna find this flower pot mining the flower pot again is going to lead to an enigma soul but this one is a little bit different than normal so this flower pot if you mine it all the way out is going to give you a message it's actually pretty funny you are going to look at it, it's going to read say hi, you say hi in chat, you'll get the soul. The last soul you are going to need a horse zooka for, you are going to run around until you find hay bales and a breakable wall, and you should be able to break into the wall, get the enigma soul. Right over here, there is your enigma soul. And just like that, Living Cave is a pretty self-explanatory spot, it's the best place for grinding moats in my opinion. I'm going to be showing you how to defeat Bacti, and then we'll be going over the other few things that are added on top of the Coliseum. One thing I do want to note, use this is probably the most important part that will be super helpful if you have multiple people. Otherwise, you can do it solo, it's just difficult. To jump it down into, in order to spot him, you have to uh, shoot these glow bowls into him, he'll get bigger. And the boss fight will start. So he has a thousand how a thousand health. There are basically five parts to the boss phase. The fourth part being the most difficult. The fifth part just being a cool part, but it's not really that hard. It's just it's like it's rewarding you for making your way through the boss fight. Obviously, you want to get hit as little as possible to preserve as much time as possible. I did not beat this boss until my third try. Now I was solo, but I ran out of time two previous tries. Basically, to damage him, you have to shoot these globals into his, uh, his, like, stems, I guess you can call them. And then this thing called a blobber cyst will spawn, which you can melee down, but it's much better to shoot globals into him in order to damage him. Now, he is faster than you and he will hit you away, but if you want to preserve as much time as possible, you want to shoot the globals into him. Now, I've never actually defeated Bact without a laggy lobby and the reason why i was able to do it with a laggy lobby is because when a lobby is laggy it gives you more time to process what's happening on your screen uh i definitely feel confident in the fact that i'm going to be able to do it this time but just keep in mind this is going to be my first time soloing it in a not laggy lobby not laggy lobby so there's uh this next little phase is there's just uh, clay blocks that'll spawn when if this thing hits you it will deal uh, 30 seconds of damage I believe and it's gonna keep going even into this phase where he's shooting down his like tentacles um, one thing to keep in mind is that time is slowed in the Coliseum you get twice as much time but that means when you if, when you get hit and it takes more time it's more devastating so instead of 30 seconds it's really a minute so now that globocyte or globocyst spawn, so I'm gonna try to shoot as much um, as much as these globbles into him as possible. Uh, if you leave the arena, you will die. You want to do as little combat with the globocyst as possible because they are faster than you. They will hit you and bounce you outside the arena. That is actually how I lost my second boss fight. Was the globocyte bounced me outside the arena, 
and I was not able to get back in in time. It was very sad because I was on the fourth phase, which is the most difficult phase. So we do have a teammate here, so it's not going to be a solo run anymore, Sag, but you're going to get him all the way down to 600. It's going to grow back up. Here's the second thing that's added on top. You need to get into the safe area. If, the, if you have a timer on your screen, it's not the safe area. If you don't have a timer on your screen, it'll say safe slice and you won't take damage. And eventually everything will start stacking on top of each other again. And there should be three tentacles that we are going to have to break down. So I don't think I was able to teleport into the safe slice just in time. And when you, if you are on the border, you actually still take damage, which I didn't realize I was. But there are these like little cooldown periods where you just have to dodge his thing while you're waiting for the like tentacles to spawn. And hopefully he is able to take care of a couple. Sometimes you'll miss. Um, the annoying part is when the slimes like bounce you onto the actual slime blocks and it's annoying because it's hard to move killed that one and now we should have one last one although this tentacle should be one hit i believe i left it at one hit also if you get too close to back to when he's in the middle he will uh you'll take 10 seconds of damage which isn't isn't great but it's also not like horrible and we will enter into the fourth phase. The fourth phase being the most difficult phase. Um, you will see why in a second. Um, you also have to wait for that to go all the way back down. It's called because of the slime copter. Now the slime copter, it might have been just the most difficult because it was lagging and now it's not lagging. Uh, but it will gradually speed up and you just have to jump over the top. It kind of reminds me of Fall Guys. An easy way to help you with this is to use an aspect of the leech. You can just you can just TP over the top of it if, if you do get stuck. And I think our teammate is gone. I think he ran out of time. Not positive, but we should be fine on time at this point. Um, on the ones that I failed, for reference, I had at this point probably 6 to 8 minutes left. And the one that I succeeded, I had 10 minutes left. Um... But it's... Oh no, he's right there. Usually it's just because you get hit by the slime copter. Because he starts adding on top of each other. So now we have the pillars coming up. We have the slime copter we have to dodge. We have... The safe slices. But I think where I went wrong originally was I broke all the tentacles at once. And I had like two blob assists or three blob assists just constantly hitting me and KBing me away. To the point where I wasn't able to actually do much. Wasn't able to kill them, wasn't able to kill other tentacles, and I think that's why I was taking so much time damage. But as of right now, we have the tentacles up, so we can start mowing these down. And basically just jump every couple seconds, and you should be fine. You should be able to take care of the, uh, the slime copter. Obviously the blob assist, I'm not, I was not able to get the globals into them. Which is kind of annoying, but if they're right next to you, then you're able to blow them up right on top of them, which is really nice. Let's get into the safe area. We have somebody else showing up, which is nice. When I did this, it was at a point where almost nobody was at this point. Uh, which kind of sucks. It, it, there, there were people that were at this point, I just couldn't find like randoms in my lobby. But definitely on release. We'll be able to find, you'll be able to find a lot of people. As long as you follow the guide, you look for other people, you ask them in chat, you will be just fine. Let's take care of this next blob assist. And I can kind of afford to, to tank damage and not really worry about stuff because I have a lot of extra time compared to last time I did Bakht because I have almost 50 minutes of rift time total, which is kind of sick. So I can kind of ignore the copter and shoot all these at the blob assist. He will shrink back down. We're gonna hit these off of me. We're gonna take him down to 200 health and this final phase is really really cool. So your pickaxe turns into a blaster, you left click the blast, you don't actually have to hold down space and you will just keep bouncing up. You can obviously still take damage. But you also fire these uh, projectiles at the thing. It takes about two full, two and a half, or two full, um, like, pickaxe fires. 
to take down the tentacles. And they don't spawn blob assist either, which is nice. Then we go, and we uh, we have to kind of bounce towards him, and we kill back. Get eight back frags. The back frags are useful because you need the globulet time charm, which you can get from 20 shy crux and eight back fragments. You actually need to beat uh, backed three times to be able to do all this. You can also get firmer growth leggings, which I haven't actually got yet, but those require back fragments, shadow crux, and volt crux, along with chicken legs. And then you use uh, eight more for Reed's quest. So for those of you curious about Reed, you teleport to him, you use eight on those, and he will uh, say, congratulations, you've built me the boat. And then he, for you to buy your own boat with scraps, this rift boat costs 25k moats. It's something to keep in mind. You need that rift boat to get to the next area. And then there's also an eye that you can grab up on top. It is. You will take care of him right here. You'll be able to TP here. And then for the Enigma Soul, you come up here. You talk to Mole. There will be a uh, green wool. You just have to jump all the way around. You'll have jump boost to come back up, and the soul will be right here. And without further ado, Coliseum is done. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this guide helped you. If it did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will be streaming this on release at twitch.tv slash COJD. Make sure to check out the other parts of the guide if you need help. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching.